Hey. So hi, everyone. Hello, everybody. Uh, it's good morning for some. It's good evening. It's good afternoon. So wherever you are in whatever part of the world, we would like to welcome you to this very special session of Indelible Evenings. So our series, Indelible Evenings, are back after the summer, after a nice longish break. And I want to thank you all for joining us today or tonight. Uh, and for those of you who do not know me, I am Rula Maria Di, the editor of the literary and arts journal Indelible, which you can read for free on www.indeliblelit.com. Uh, I'd just like to take a moment for a little bit of housekeeping before we start our session. So firstly, um, except for the speakers, of course, make sure to keep your mics muted during the talk, just in order to avoid any background noise. And um, feel free to use the chat box in order to leave any comments for the speakers. There will be a Q&A session after the talk. So we will have 15 minutes of Q&A after the poets have read their poetry, discussed poetry and medicine. Uh, the floor will be given to the audience to ask and comment and engage with the speakers as well. So I am indeed delighted to welcome tonight's super special guests. Um, first of all, is there really an unbridgeable gulf between science and poetry, the way that many of us usually see? Do art and science have to be, have so, to be distinct so distinct by nature? Or is there this invisible bridge that many people fail to see or tend to dismiss? Um, are the interests of physicians and medical researchers limited to the boundaries of medical jargon and technicalities? Um, but we know that for poets, there are no boundaries. So uh, there is poetic wisdom in scientific knowledge for poets, but we don't really see that, or it's not, it's not very mainstream to see it coming from, um, from professional doctors who are so well achieved, such as our guests this evening. Um, now this bridge actually has existed a very, very long time ago. Um, many of you have probably seen the, the symbol, the medical, the staff, and the two intertwining serpents. So we see it sometimes near pharmacy labels, we see it uh, wherever medicine is involved. And if we want to trace the roots of this symbol, then it all goes back to the, the god Hermes Thoth, which is the conflation of both the, um, uh, the Greek god Hermes and uh, the ancient Egyptian god Thoth. So um, this is this is the symbol of of this um, of this syncretism between both. And uh, interestingly, Hermes Thoth was not just um, the the deity that represents medicine or the god of medicine, but he was also the scribe of the gods, the inventor of writing, the patron of all arts that depended on writing. So hence poetry. Um, but whatever happened to this bridge, we don't know. However, thanks to people like Dr. Norbert Hirschhorn, Dr. Fuad Fuad, and Dr. Hanna Saadeh, uh, and many, many others, uh, some of them that you know we probably know through history, like Humphrey Davy, uh, Goethe, uh, William Carlos Williams, Ada Lovelace, even James Clerk Maxwell wrote poetry. So we know that there is this tradition that isn't very well known, but at the same time, it's there for those who can see it. So the bridge between poetry and medicine will be discussed and performed this evening by Dr. Norbert Hirschhorn, Dr. Fuad Fuad, and Dr. Hanna Zahadi. Uh, I will take a moment to introduce our notable guests. I will start with Dr. Norbert Hirschhorn who is a public health physician commended by President Bill Clinton as an American health hero and proud to follow in the tradition of physician poets. Dr. Hirschhorn is one of the inventors and developers of the life-saving oral rehydration therapy for people suffering fluid loss from cholera and other infectious diarrheal illnesses. So um, Dr. Hirschhorn, could we also uh, give you the credit for Gatorade as well? and other sports drinks. <laughs> <laughs> Not quite the right. Well, fair enough. <laughs> they made, they made a enough. lot of money. They made a lot of money, but I didn't. <laughs> okay. All right. 
So um, it is estimated that um, Dr. Hirschhorn's work has saved around 50 million people from suffering from dehydration. And after two decades abroad, he now lives in Minneapolis. He has published six collections, the most recent a bilingual Arabic English co-translation with Syrian physician poet, Dr. Fuad M. Fuad. Uh, the collection is titled Once Upon a Time in Aleppo. Uh, of the latter's poems, um, it, it's, by, it's um, printed by Hippocrates Press. Okay, uh, and for the website of Dr. Hirschhorn, I will also be sharing it in the chat box. It's www.birdspoet.com. And now for Dr. Fuad. Uh, Dr. Fuad M. Fuad is a physician and poet from Aleppo, Syria. Following the outbreak of the war in Syria, he and his family moved to Lebanon, where he is now at the American University of Beirut. He's actually joining us from London this evening. Dr. Fuad is deeply engaged in research and action on behalf of Syrian refugees. He has published five volumes of poetry in Arabic, the most recent being Once Upon a Time in Aleppo. Several of his poems have appeared in translation in English and French poetry journals. Last but certainly not least, Dr. Hanna Saadi is both a creative writer and infectious disease specialist. He is currently the Clinical Professor Emeritus and Geriatric Medicine Selective Program Director at the University of Oklahoma's Health Scientist Center. And he has authored five poetry books, four novels, and two collections of short stories. Dr. Hanna has been voted among the top 5% of the doctors in America by Slice Magazine in July 2012 and is the recipient of several medical awards such as the Don F. Reinhardt MD Medical Service Award and the Medical Humanities Award for prolific, compassionate, and insightful literary work in the field of medical humanities. Um, Dr. Hanna Saade traveled to the U.S. in 1971 for completing his postgraduate medical training. The 20-year Lebanese Civil War prevented him from returning to his fatherland, thus making Oklahoma his second home, where he has been productive as both physician and writer. For more about Dr. Saade's literary works, you can visit his website on www.hannasaade.com. And with this, I welcome you all. I am very, very honored to have you with us this evening. And I will invite you now to read your poetry, the selected poems that you have chosen for this evening. So Dr. Hirschhorn, would you like to start? I think we should start with Dr. Fouad, who will read the Arabic. Okay. And then the, we, we, we did a co-translation of all his poems and I'll follow, with, follow him. Thank okay. you, Bert, thank you. Thank you, Rula, I mean, for this very kind um, invitation. And uh, I really appreciate and you know, be honored also to be with Bert and Dr. Hannah Saadi. Um, so I will read uh, from uh, the, latest, the latest book. Um, I mean, Bert and I, we like to say this is not translation, this is transformation uh, of uh, the uh, original uh, Arabic poems. You're muted, Fuad. Uh, you're muted, Dr. Fuad. Uh, yeah, it seems okay. I'm muted. Yeah. So uh, again, I will read from um, the book Once Upon a Time in Aleppo. This is, uh, uh, as you mentioned, Rula, this um, published in English. Uh, by Hippocrates, and uh, and this is a selection from a different poetry book that originally written in Arabic. So, uh, um, so I will read each paragraph, and then Bert will uh, kindly will read uh, in uh, the translation in English. Tafsilat li mashfa ba'id. الممر المؤدي إلى غرفة العمليات لا يفضي إلى نهايته ولا تصله الطرق كم مر الموت عليه وكم عادوا وهم يقشرون الصباحات الأخيرة وينتظرون الله وعلى زوايا الشفاه الباهتة لحظة منسية 
لفرح عتيق. Reports from a far hospital. The corridor to the operating theater. Endless, neither do roads reach it. Dead ones have passed through, unpeeling their final mornings, waiting for Allah on the tip of their lips, on an unremembered moment of old happiness. غرفة العمليات المسجعة على الطاولة السوداء الأردية الخضراء الأضواء المسلطة على فوهة الجسد اليود الجليل الهسيس الجارح للمشارق الدم الدم والفضاء الغائم الغشاوة المتأرجحة فوق الرؤوس الترقب خلف الباب الزفرة في الحلق الدم 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 The operating theater a black surgical bed blue drape targeted light over a small hole in the body black iodine hissing sound of the scalpel blood blood a haze over the heads of ones waiting outside deep sighs rasping their throats blood 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 الغرفه الاخيره الى اليسار تعرفها امي والممرضه العجوز والامصال المعلقه في الوريد النساء سقطن اخيرا النساء النائمات على جنوبهن من القروح وبقايا من الضحك المتخفي بقايا لا تستحق التذكر The last room to the left where my mom lay Saline solution dripping slowly, a nurse, where many me- women passed, neglected like their bed sores, where remains of muted laughter are heard, but hardly worth a mention. الحديقة المواجهة للمبنى شاهدة على وقت يميل ولكن ليس لها إلا أن تطأطئ رأسها وتؤلف العشب بصمت للرجال المتدلين كالدمامل من الشرفات المريضة. A small garden facing the building, witness to people collapsed over time, does nothing but bows its head in sorrow and silently weaves shrouds for men hanging from balconies like festering boils. I should show the book from the Hippocrates Press in London. If you go to hippocratespress.org, you will be able to purchase it if you'd like. Thank you. الذئب في الممر الروح الهائمة في الموضع الذي يلي المشرحة حيث الكحول أقل نفوذا والمرة لا يمرون إلا ورؤوسهم محنية دع أربطة الشاش تكرج في الصالة واتبع نقطة الدم المرضى من القسوة بقعة الدهن الحامضة على السرير الذئب في الممر ظله على الحائط يجرح البنت الصغيرة والجدة لا تضع قميصك الملوثة تحت رأسك لا تسأل لماذا تبكي المرأة خلف الباب الذئب في الممر أوقف الموسيقى إنه يموت The wolf in the hospital corridor lurking in the hallways like a revenant creature where antiseptics fail and visitors pass by, heads hung low. Bandages unroll in the waiting room, following drops of blood. Patients poisoned by witchcraft, rancid fat on the beds. 
The wolf in the corridor, its specter on the wall, racks the little girl and her grandmother. Don't rest your head on that foul sheet. Don't ask the woman behind the door why she is crying. The wolf in the corridor, put down the oud, choke off the singer. We all are dying. Now I will read a um, few poems from a book called uh, Parts of Animal. And these, you know, I used to call, I called her, uh, them as sort of anatomic poems. الدمع إن يكن من الفرح وهو بارد يجمع ويعطى للحزين يزول حزنه ليس للدمع عدد للدمع طعم ومجرى ونهايات على طرف الفم للدمع موتى ومناديل وشهقات عالية من الضحك ليس في الدمع ما يخجل Tears, if they are from happiness, should be collected cold and be given to an unhappy person, his grief will vanish. Countless tears, poignant, coursing downstream to the mouth. Tears for the beloved dead, handkerchiefs waving. Floods of laughter, no shame in tears, simply salt and water. Al-Turquwa. Law lam akun min al-azmi, lakhtartu al-rish. Abadan marbutun bisiwai. Ala hafati al-jildi, ghayra anni la ara. La manfadha li illa ahlami an akun al-rish. الذي على حافة الهواء في الزرقة الواسعة للسماء الواسعة سوى أنني مربوط بسواي عظم مربوط بسواي وجاهز للكسر Clavicle If I weren't made of bone lying under the skin unseen I choose to be a feather Hopeless my dream to be a feather at the edge of air in the bright blue of the wide sky. Yet I am shackled to others, a bone fettered to others, fragile, easily broken. A surah. La tu hawil bin isbai an al kifla au an telij al batma. دع طرف اللسان على السرة والحس طعم الحياة السرة لو تأملتها عين عمياء تنظر إلى الداخل السرة سر ومكيدة وشهوة مبتورة قوقعة طعنة مكتومة ذكريات على هيئة ثقب صلة الوصل المهجورة Umbilicus, don't try to winkle the lock with your finger to slip inside the belly, but stroke it with the tip of your tongue, lick the taste of life. Think about it. It is a blind eye that peeps inside, a secret, a trap, amputated lust, a sheath, a shrouded puncture, memory disguised as a cleft, an abandoned bridge, a regret. Pancreas. A sutfa to wahda ha maramani fi hadi hi dhulmati. Li shubha to lkatili, wa nasiju al multafi ala thatihi. Baitu ma yudabbaru fi lkhafa, wa hafaz to sir. عزلة الأصم تلاحقني وتبتر أطرافي كي لا أبصق مادتي أقبع في صورة الغامض متحينا فرصة الذئب كيما 
في عضة واحدة أفرغ شهوة القتل. Pancreas. Just by bad luck, I was cast into this Stygian pit. I look like a killer, occult, always suspect. I watch what happens from behind the arras and keep its secrets. Isolated like a leper, cut off like an amputee, crouched like a Norway rat, ready to strike with one bite. الطحال الصامت تطبخ الأسرار في الزاوية النائية ما الذي تدبره في العتمة ما الذي تهيئ لمقتلي فكر بالكبد شبيهك الداكن فكر ما الذي يعنيه أن تكون مستوحدا لا طريق إليك لا مخرج منك مقبرة الدم الذاهل عن سواك ناقص الجثة من بعض الحيوان كأنك نسيان متخثر لا ترى نفسك إلا على خلقة المقتول Lean, the silent one You brew secrets in desolation What are you doing in that darkness Preparing for the next murder Shadowy, alone like the liver no avenue into you, but no, no one ever comes out of you. You, charnel house of blood, hewn corpses, remnants, coagulated oblivion. Now the last one is uh, Ashiraf. Khuliqtu <clears throat> min fikratil hub. أن أكون الأقرب إلى الروح مني إلى العضو في الممر الضيق بين الحقيقة والوهم اخترت الغشاء والتصقت على القلب كي يعرف رائحة الأنثى كي يهدأ في حضني المتألم وأمسحه بالسائل السقي أنا الأقرب إلى الروح مني إلى العضو ربما لأنني بلا شكل منحت صفحة واحدة في الكتاب ولا أبالي أمنح الباقي حبيبي تركت مرميا على الهامش ضعوا في المتن حبيبي أخذ صورته لأحميه أغذيه من انتباهي إليه أنا الأقرب إلى الروح لا أرى سبباً لذاتي لكن لحبيبي The pericardium I was born from a phantom called love more nearly a ghost than a body in the narrow alley <clears throat> between truth and illusion I chose to be a membrane stuck to my lover, the heart to let him detect the smell of a woman, to contain his ceaseless fatigue in my lap, rinsing him tenderly in my plentiful bath. More nearly a specter than a body. Because I am shapeless, I was depicted on just one page in Gray's Anatomy. My lover, the others, front and center, I don't care, left in the margin of that page. I don't care. I've remodeled myself to take his shape, nourishing him in my vigilance. More nearly a spirit than a body. I see no other reason to exist but to cradle my love. Thank you. Thank you, Bert. Thank you, Fuad. It's always a Thank pleasure. Thank you so much. Thank you. Can you hear me? Yes. I have, okay, well, uh, something happened with my screen. I can't, I mean, it's it's frozen, so I don't really know whether or not if I press the mic on or off, you're able to hear me. Anyway, uh, I just want to say that this must have been the most powerful imagery I've ever heard. 
I mean, it's this, um, the, the carnal nature, the strikingness of um, images from the operation room and reflections of, of doctors during medical procedures and seeing people dying. It's just, um, it's goosebump material. Thank you so much for sharing this. And of course, Thank we'll you. have more time to discuss it right now. Um, Dr. Hanna Saade, I know you asked me to help with the uh, with the screen sharing, but I'm afraid I'm not able to do that anymore because my screen has been frozen. So, uh, but I think you can do that on your part. Okay, let, let me try. Okay, I'm so sorry about that. I'm still trying to see what I can do.